Hi, this is John O'Brien with California Credence at CaliforniaCredence.com and today I'm going to talk about one of the most important parts of uh, using uh, backing tracks. Now a lot of bands will just use uh, backing tracks such as uh, just a, a front of house type of a backing track. Uh, they might have, be running mono right uh, and the left will be uh, clicks and uh, triggers or uh, vocal cues and things like that. Uh, ours runs a little bit more complicated. Uh, we have a front of house, we run stereo uh, two channel right left um, and then uh, we have the in-ear monitors uh, with the click and the cue track and then we also because we don't have a bass player we have bass tracks. So it's very important across uh, songs to get the bass tracks uh, and the front of house tracks very stable so that the experience for the audience is very consistent and it sounds like a well mixed band. Um, so we're going to delve into that in Multitracker because Multitracker is a fantastic tool for stabilizing all of your backing tracks. Um, but before we launch into that, I do want to uh, let you know that it's important to, uh, especially when you're stabilizing the volume of your backing tracks, is to develop a show that is going to be consistent, uh, have sets, different sets that are fairly consistent. One of the bad habits that cover bands get into is uh, long indecisive pauses between songs because what's happening is is maybe someone is uh, asking or re making requests and the unfortunate thing that happens is is uh, when bands take requests um, they end up pleasing the one person and possibly disappointing an entire audience um, so one of the things in developing your set uh, that you're going to mix and have consistent is uh, think like a DJ. Uh, DJs generally uh, don't necessarily like what they're playing. In fact, they're playing the same songs over and over again because they watch the crowd uh, to see what their reaction is. And then they uh, perform their show based on how much of a crowd reaction they have. So they're very in tune to what the audience wants. And, and a DJ actually knows more about what an audience wants than even the audience themselves. So cover bands, when they uh, operate the same way, it's important not necessarily to play the songs that you like, um, but playing songs that uh, audiences typically like. Now that doesn't mean that you're going to be playing all the same songs that all the other bands play. Um, there are uh, a lot of good songs out there and a lot of songs that are hugely popular. Uh, so one of the things that we do with California Credence is we focus on songs that um, are definitely popular. Uh, they do have a good audience reaction, but may not be um, common amongst a lot of other cover bands because venues, a lot of times, what they will say is it seems like you guys in your cover bands uh, repeat the same songs over and over again. This band plays that same set list than another band does. So that's what we try to do is uh, try to figure out well, what would be a way to um, mix things up a little bit. Uh, find those songs that uh, get a good audience reaction and may not be overplayed by a lot of different cover bands. Thought I would throw that in uh, mainly in the context of developing consistent sets that sound good. Um, and so what we're going to do right now is we're going to delve into Multitracker and we're going to stabilize our volumes so that we're going to have a great show for our audience. Let's get going on Multitracker. Okay, so this is where we're going to launch Multitracker. So here we're going to plug in the audio interface. So we're going to be using the um, audio box um, by PreSonus. It has a total of four outputs. One and two is stereo right and left for front of house. Three is for bass. Four is going to be for the click track. So we're going to go ahead and set this up with one and two as the front of house, three is the bass, and four is the click track. We're going to go ahead and open up a um, song here. Uh, so we're going to start out with uh, Before He Cheats, and each one of these tracks is going to be pointed to one of the four outputs down here. Uh, I'll put one and two for the front of house, three and four for bass and in-ears. So you'll notice here uh, this output is going to be to four because this is the click and the click is going to go in the ears. Um, and then uh, the next one, the triggers are going to be also in the in-ears. Um, that is uh, going to be an output four. 
Three is the base that goes to front of house, so that's channel three. Um, and uh, then um, the remaining um, audio outputs are going to be directed to one and two. Uh, you'll notice the caddy corner checks means it's going to be stereo. One is assigned to left and two is assigned to right. So you'll see that on, uh, these are all the front of house tracks. Um, excluding the bass track, which we've directed to channel 3. So after a lot of uh, work with this uh, multi-tracker, I've uh, gotten it down to where 0.25 is what you want for front house. And then I code the bass, which is number 3, uh, at about 4, 0.43. And then the click and vocal cues is about 0.81. Um, generally, I set this one all the way up. I adjust it with the fader. That's how you get these numbers in each of these. Um, with the bass, I have it set to where the red mark will hit somewhere here, and uh, that means that the bass is going the way it should. Uh, with the front of house, they should hit uh, kind of in the range of where this handle is on the fader. Um, you'll notice, you'll see what I'm talking about with the LED uh, when it's spiking. Um, uh, we want it to wind up somewhere in between here. Uh, and uh, we'll demonstrate that in a minute. So uh, the drums, I don't want them anywhere, so I don't really, if you look at the output for the drums, um, I don't have them directed to any output, which is the equivalent of them being muted. Before we get to setting levels, uh, let's have a look at how I handle the click and trigger, since those are the loudest in the outputs at the bottom. Um, with the click, um, I have a, a little compressor that's put on here that's built in the multi-tracker to stabilize that output. Uh, you'll notice I created a preset called Triggers, and I have a preset called Click, and both of these are compressing the signal to make it stable, uh, loud, um, because we don't need a lot of variation in the level. So <clears throat> regarding level, um, there's another issue. I'm going to load China Grove because... Um, some of the things you want to watch out for is when you have tracks with percussive instruments on them, like a tambourine, cowbell, or whatever, such as we have in China Grove. Um, we have a tambourine track here, and uh, those are tricky because you'll notice I have it turned down because um, they can hit pretty hard. Even though they're not sending a hot level, uh, they can hit pretty hard, and you can think that you know, you're running them stereo, and, um, you know, they're, they're putting out a lot of energy. So you'll notice here, as we'll see with the LED here, once the song starts, that the tambourine, we're going to have a look at how it's hitting. And the way we examine how the tambourine is hitting, see, it's in range here, as you can see. But what we want to do is we can see where the tambourine is hitting, and we solo this track in order to see what kind of an impact it's having on our stereo output. And so here's the stereo output. We can see the tambourine is really not striking in that area, but it's still going to be loud enough because it chops through the mix quite well. So instead of waiting for the song to progress, I just fire through the song and examine and see where we are at each point in the song and see how consistent that signal is. We do the same thing with, um, you know, looking at other things like backing vocals. How loud are these backing vocals hitting this? Are they falling within that range that we're looking for? It's okay if percussive instruments don't fall in there, but you can look at that uh, vocal. Uh, we, don't he we don't have to listen to anything. We can just watch the LEDs, and if it's in the range where those faders are, um, then we're, we're pretty good. Just uh, where those handles are on the faders, as long as it stays in between there, then the vocals are going to be coming out front of house pretty pretty decently. And then when, uh, same thing with tambourine, when you start adding in all the instruments, um, it is going to affect the front of house level um, because when you summate the instruments, it'll make everything louder. With the bass, we come down about three uh, slots down and the red should be hitting about there. So you'll see we'll go up to base and see where our base level is 0.7. You want to take note of that. And then um, we're going to bring it up a little bit because it wasn't quite hitting hard enough. So let's see how it looks down here. 
Um, looks like we're hitting at that three lines down at the, you know, right there is where we want it. And on all the songs, we want it to hit at the same place. So what we're going to do is we're going to eke it up just a little bit more. Um, we need to bring that up to, say, 80, 80-ish, 81. So let's have a look. Okay, so the bass is pumping in. Now we see where the redness of that LED is hitting about where we want it to be, uh, right uh, at, that, at the tip of that fader, like three dots, three lines down, um, and that's where we want it to be. So um, this is, uh, uh, looks like our bass is doing pretty good. I would probably put a little on so that we're going to come out on top of that uh, fader just a little bit, uh, see how it hits the line right at where it's supposed to be. I'm going to go ahead and save that because I like the mix. And uh, what that'll do is now all of the bases should be hitting about the top of that handle on that fader. Um, and then when we're looking at the click, it's more the green needs to hit somewhere where the line of that fader is. Uh, we don't look at the red on that because we've compressed the signal and it's stable. So the green should hit around there. And so um, on uh, this one, um, we would look at the click and uh, we're happy with it. We're going to save that and uh, we're going to move on to our next song. So Centerfield is going to have this percussive clap at the beginning, which is going to be very loud. So, of course, again, on the mains, we're going to have to mitigate a little bit of that um, level. So you'll notice that it may not be hitting exactly as loud as other tracks would on the front of house. So we're just going to solo it here and um, see how it looks on the um, uh, front of house channels right and left here. So we can see that it's coming in good. It's looking real good. So we're going to stick with that level. Since all the other instrument tracks are being directed to uh, stereo outputs 1 and 2, uh, it's good to solo each one, look at their impact on the front of house channel 1 and 2, and uh, just have a look. Soloing channels gives you an idea on how much um, volume they're adding to your front of house. So then what you can go by each one and see how it adds up, as long as it doesn't push too far high above that fader um, you're still in good you're in good shape but as you can see the bass is not quite hitting hard enough here <clears throat> see it's a little bit low um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go up top here and uh, we want to bring that bass up to this line here and we're going to go up to the bass and uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, single it out um, eke it up a bit uh, let's come on down here and have a look at how it's doing it's still looking pretty weak, so we're going to head back up there and see if we can give the bass just a little bit more uh, push and uh, see if we can't get that bass just a little bit louder. Um, so what we have to do is go down and check. We're looking at channel 3. Eh, it's still pretty weak, so we're going to need to push it maybe even some more. So we look and make sure that it's uh, at 78. We're going to push it up to maybe 83. And uh, let's have a look at where it's coming out um, down low um, uh, here at the bottom. So we can see that it's uh, still not quite hitting as hard as we would like. So what's going to have to happen is, is it looks like I need to bring that fader up because it wasn't at the 43 mark. Okay, it needs to be at 43. So the, the overall output was actually not hitting as hard. So let's go ahead and save that. And we've gotten uh, center field all taken care of. Front of house looks good. Um, bass is hitting right. Uh, click is hitting right. Um, everything looks very consistent. And this is how we want all of our backing tracks to look. Everything hitting consistently. Okay. So in summary, the output for the front of house should be set to 0.25. 
the front of or the uh, output for the base should be set at 0.43, and the output for the click should be 0.81. And so the uh, red uh, tip of the LED f should be uh, about here for the front of house. The red tip for the LED is real tight here for the base. We only worry about the green for the click, and it should be hitting about here because it's a compressed signal. So since Multitracker is a very multifunctional system, you can also set these levels uh, at a different place in the playlist view. Uh, you can accomplish the same thing. So I'm going to load a playlist here. And uh, this will get me to work through the same pr process that I just did uh, in configuration mode in playlist mode so that we can set these levels pretty much according to the songs that we are currently um, going to perform. So here you have your tracks. And generally what I like to do is I like to set the size to the biggest size. <clears throat> and that'll just give me the best view here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of some of these things in case uh, so that they don't show up. And then I'm going to reorder so I can put the output buses on the top instead of on the bottom so that I can really look at what we're uh, getting as far as a result. You'll see uh, that all the settings are the same as they were set in the uh, configuration mode. 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.43, 0 0.81. And uh, so this is another way that we can go ahead and set our levels. So when we're launching a song like Dreams, we're going to have a look at where the bass is hitting, where the front of house is hitting, where the click is hitting. And you can see everything's pretty consistent, but the bass is looking a little bit weak. So what I might want to do is um, start looking at uh, working on those things that are weak, like the bass here doesn't really look like it's hitting where it should be. However, if you see that we've already stabilized center field, when we launch that, because we did that in the other configuration mode, everything's looking really good here. We can see that the levels are really coming out nicely. The click and the bass and everything is hitting where it should be. The bass is um, uh, you know, hitting uh, at the three levels down here. Uh, the click is the green is hitting inside of that range. Um, and so you can see that center field, because we fixed it in configuration mode, it's running quite uh, well here uh, during our performance. However, we can still set these levels in playlist view if we want to. Now we can see with like Do It Again or other songs that we haven't worked on, uh, the levels may or may not be really hitting where they're supposed to. Um, man, I feel like a woman. Um, let's try that one. Uh, see where that one is hitting. Uh, everything, so I've worked on these. Uh, the bass is looking a little weak on this one. Um, so these are things that can be corrected uh, in playlist view or configuration. Um, I usually use configuration um, because uh, it's a little bit... Uh, stronger of a um, accurate uh, setting for the levels. Um, and when I do the levels, I like to skip through the song at different points to make sure that all the dynamics are accounted for. So the bummer about using Playlist View is that you, um, if you're working on all of your settings and it gets to the end of the song, it wipes out all of the levels uh, that you've set. So what will happen is once the song ends, um, then all of the levels you've been changing, uh, trying to dial it in, will be lost the minute the song reaches its end point. So that's the huge disadvantage of using Playlist View for mixing. See how everything just reset and um, any changes you make are gone at the end of the song. This is why I like to, I prefer to use uh, song configuration mode for um, getting the levels and saving the songs and the song levels. So we're working on Man, I Feel Like a Woman, and it looks like the bass is not really hitting where it's supposed to. So we're going to go to the bass and we're going to eke it up a little bit here so that it falls a little bit closer to where we want it to be down here where the bass is. Um, see where it's kind of in that range now. Now that we have everything set in song configuration mode, um, we're happy with our mix. We got the click and everything. We're just going to hit save, and we've saved that. 
and it's ready to be put into um, operation in the set. So there you have it. Track level stabilization all done in multi-tracker and as easy as can be. Once you have all your levels set, uh, you're ready to put on a great show.